There we go. Here we are. So today we're going to talk about chapter 17, yeah. 18, and Derry the Fourth Interlude. Got it. So we're starting with 17, another one of the missing, mm -hmm. the death of Patrick Hockstetter. Yes. This is your favorite chapter so far, right? <laughs> no. No? He's the only one that I'm glad died. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> Which sounds terrible, but. Th this was a hard this chapter for you to get through. very hard to read, yes. I did not. I, I know you I said you wanted to just stop. Yeah, I did. And I wanted to, like, just, okay, yeah, I got it. He's a horrible person. <laughs> so we, I, I sucked it up and I did it. We find out his story. He, he's a psychopath. Basically, a, if, social, a sociopath. A sociopath who, is, by the end of the chapter, he's a full-on psychopath. Yeah. But he doesn't feel, like, I like the explanation is he feels like he's the only real person. Yeah. Is, is, that, so, is that a solipsist, I think, where you, oh, I don't you know. believe you're the only thing that exists? Everything oh, else is, like, I don't know. I've your imagination. I've never heard of it before. I, heard of it before. I, I think, I think, I, we have to look that up, but... Yeah, so he doesn't really feel emotions. No. Nope. Or uh, pain. Or pain. He yeah. does. He has no empathy for others. Nope. Um. He has. He has one emotion. He has a fear of leeches. Yes. Stemming back to a childhood. He was a child. Yeah, and they were incident. swimming, and he got leeches on him. Yes. And somehow, you know, being a sociopath slash psychopath, he managed to make it through school without anybody. Noticing. He's very quiet, that's why. The reason is he was quiet in a town where there were a bunch of kids like Henry Bowers mm -hmm. who were distracting the yeah. teachers. So we find out at the age of five he murdered his little brother. Yes. Real little brother. Oh, his, his little brother hard. <laughs> smothered him in the crib because his little brother was disturbing his routine. Yep. His dinner was late. Not, you know, it was creepy. And his father found evidence that he had done it mm -hmm. but i guess he he couldn't face that so yeah. he just he pushed it out and never con yeah. confronted it yeah um which that was hard to read that was sad yeah that was really sad and the whole time like he does it when his mom's sleeping and the baby's napping he goes in there and does it and then he goes and watches tv like nothing happened yeah he got a little yeah. bit of a rush exhilaration he went, yep, yep he went and watched tv after once his mom finds the little baby and the dad comes and the neighbors are coming, he just keeps watching his TV. Yeah. There's no reaction. They're alone when when you just like think back and go, What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Like he's five, he's old enough to know something's yeah. wrong. So it was the the official cause of death was crib crib, yes. crib death. Yeah, like a SIDS yeah. an infant death. Yeah. yeah. So so the whole thing with the flies and the pencil box, that was that was kid stuff compared to yeah, what he's capable he's, of. Yeah. So the chapter starts in the library, 1985. Um, Beverly is starting to remember some things. She she remembers killing a part of it. Mm -hmm. Not not it, but a part of it. And she pulls up her sleeve and she has a big, big scar on her arm. Mm -hmm. So now we go back to 1958. She is. Uh, she has bullseye, the slingshot. She's on her way to the dump to practice. Right. And she's daydreaming about Bill. Mm -hmm. She hears some kids in the dump having some fun. She automatically assumes it's her friends. She's walking up to him, you know, daydreaming about Bill. And she almost walks right into Henry and, and his gang. You have Victor. Henry, Victor, and Patrick. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. And Belch. Oh, yeah, Belch was there, too. Belch yeah. was there. She walks, she almost walks right into him. She realizes the whole walk up, there were part, you know, there were certain she was, parts. She could, have been seen. she could have been seen through cars and things. But they were very into what they were doing. Yeah, so they're standing there with their pants around their ankles, lighting farts. <laughs> which, I don't know how much you pay attention when we play the Zelda, the Breath of the Wild, but the scene set out when she walks up to them and they're lighting farts it reminds me of walking up onto the baka blends <laughs> when they're just sort of jumping around the campfire and <laughs> I, I, that's sort of the image that i got yeah, in my head when the, i could see that so <laughs> so they're lighting farts and at first she's like what are they doing <laughs> like why why are their pants down <laughs> yeah yeah so shortly after that you know she's hiding now between some cars she mm -hmm. really can't 
go back because she realizes she could be seen. Yeah. So she's hiding between some cars. Vic and Belch tell Henry they have to go, and Henry mm-hmm. starts making fun of them. Yeah. He, he even makes it. a joke about Belch's dead father. No. So, so they walk away, and as they're walking, they walk right past her. She has to like dive into a car yeah. to avoid being seen. So now she's hiding in this car. Now it's just Patrick and Henry. Yeah, two crazies. And things are quiet for a little bit. And then she hears Patrick uh, say, like, let me show you something. And Henry's like, what? And he's like, it'll, it'll feel good. And then she hears silence again, and she peeks out, and Patrick is sort of diddling him and Henry at the same time. Yeah. And what, what are you thinking right now? I don't know. Uh, Patrick's a weirdo. Like, yeah. Cause you know, but Henry's allowing it. So yes, he's to a point. And then he's like, oh, wait a minute. This well, is... Patrick wants to put it in his mouth. Oh, yeah, that's says, right. That's what sets it up. Hold on, Henry. Say... But here's the thing that got me about it. Is pa- Patrick has a whole technique down. Yeah. So it's like he's done this with other kids. But who else? Like that's. Weird. I don't know, but he has a technique, so he's worked this out before. Yeah. He's like going under, tickling, and coming back. He's had, He has a whole routine. So... <laughs> And he told him, he goes, but you like it. you got a boner. <laughs> yeah. As soon as he wants to suck it. Yeah. Henry sort of open hand slaps him off and yeah. Patrick falls down. Henry says, uh, if you tell anybody about this, I'll kill you. And he says, you like it. And he says, I'm going to kill you. And he says, well, you got a boner. Mm-hmm. But yeah. she got him there. I mean, yeah, he did. He's just, it took, it took that extra step for him to, uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, Henry threatens him with telling everybody about his refrigerator. Yes. And that's how yes. he, Patrick is. Patrick gets stunned and it's like, and then Henry leaves. Yeah. And now you're just there with Patrick. Yeah. Well, and Henry says, if I see you around again, I'll yeah. kill you. So. Yeah. Or I'll tell them about your refrigerator. So now Henry has it in for Patrick. Mm-hmm. So... Or no, no, he tells him, if I see you around again, I'll knock your block off. Oh, yeah. So he, he's out to beat him up now. Yeah, okay. Well, add him to the list. So Henry walked away. He almost saw her because they're all... Because she's peeking out. She's she's fascinated by what's going on and trying to yeah. see what's happening. And during all of this, she has to pee really bad. Yeah. But oh, while they were playing with themselves, yeah. she started thinking about Bill again. Yeah. About, I wonder what <laughs> Bill's is like. Yeah. I wonder, yeah, look at their things. I wonder if Bill has a thing. Yeah. Bill's thing does that. <laughs> I wonder what Bill's thing is like. So, <laughs> this whole chapter is very weird. It is very weird. This is a very weird. In, in a book full of weird chapters, this is a weird right. one. So now Patrick is, or now, now Henry's gone. Patrick is sitting there. She has to pee. She can't hold it anymore. She decides to make a run for it. Mm-hmm. So she runs back towards the Barons. Just as she gets... At the tree line, she turns around and Patrick is gone. Mm-hmm. So she runs into some bushes, starts peeing. She's, you know, pulling her pants up. She hears some footsteps. Patrick is walking down this path, really r- right in front of her. He stops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're getting the feeling by now like she's been caught. He's seen her and he's yeah. coming after her. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't realize it because this is like right between the barrens and the dump. Yeah. So there's still some trash laying around. Yeah. There's a refrigerator sitting there. Mm-hmm. And so Patrick is standing in front of the refrigerator. And he starts like uh, humming and doing this swaying movement, almost mm-hmm. like this ritualistic thing. Yeah. And then what, what are you thinking at this part? Well, I don't know. Like, I, it's like, okay, well, what could be in the refrigerator? I'm almost scared to find out what could be in the refrigerator. Yeah. And... And why he uses the refrigerator. Now, I'm just thinking, though, that's probably something with animals. Because mm-hmm. that's what you get with sociopaths and psychopaths. You know, they start off with animals, something. Oh, God. And like, that's what we find out yes, through the it's, narration. It's is even that, worse. <laughs> is that he's been killing animals by... Suffocating. By putting them or, in the refrigerator yeah. and just keeping an eye on them until they yeah. die. He'll come back. You know, maybe a couple animals lasted a few days. Yeah, that was that that um, story about the dog that left. <laughs> there's that, been that was hard to read. Neighborhood pets have been going missing. It's it's been Patrick taking them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it at the time when he was getting in the fridge there, he was 
looking for a pigeon that he had put in there. Yeah. Well, he had to stop because um, his neighbors and everybody started getting suspicious of him. Mm -hmm. And now he, he's feeling a little anxiety because Henry knows about his Henry's record. the one who he's been yep. feeling. He's been feeling like there's eyes yeah, watching him. Yeah, like somebody knows what he's doing, and now he knows it's Henry. Yeah. So, but this was the most satisfying death so far. <laughs> so he opens the refrigerator up yeah. to look for this pigeon, mm -hmm. and these little flesh-colored, like macaroni shell-looking things are in there. Mm -hmm. One of them flies out, uh, lands on his arm, and starts sucking it. So yeah. it, it's a flying leech. Yeah. Basically. Because that's Remember, the only thing he's afraid the of. The only thing he's afraid of. Otherwise, he's he doesn't feel pain. He doesn't really feel pain. And he's not really scared of anything Freaking else. Desk. Sorry. I forgot so, that does that. So he pulls it off. Mm -hmm. And then a couple more fly out at him. Yeah. Uh, so they're just attacking him now. Yeah. One of when them, he like, pulls it off, the head still is in there. The head stays in. Yeah. So um, one of them lands on his eye and just like sucks his eye out. Yeah. So and he's running she away. Hears, she hears him screaming and yelling and running, and she looks out, and there's blood all over the place. Mm -hmm. And now she got the sense like he's being dragged away. Yeah. Now, something comes out. That's right. He's like fainting, mm -hmm. and something steps out into the path and um, pulls him. He, she, she hears her father's voice say hello and goodbye. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And she's like, it can't be my dad because he's out of town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and as that happens, um, something grabs him and pulls him. The refrigerator door um, uh, closes, but a few of the leeches are still out. Yeah. And one of them lands on her, mm -hmm. and she's able to pull that one out. And the head gets stuck, and then she has to get the head out. Get the yeah. head out. And then another one's flying towards her. She has her uh, slingshot. She shoots a ball bearing at it. And it's one of those shots where you know you missed. Sort of mm -hmm. like taking a, you know, throwing a basketball. You know when you're going to miss. Yeah. She knew she was going to miss, but somehow it curved. And made it, found its target. And it hit it. So there's like a bit of magic, go or there's like an outside influence working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we have. We always had that outside. That, that, that outside. good force. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a force that's helping her through. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And she follows the tracks. And she, yep, she follows the tracks. She, you know, there's blood. There's the tracks from his, like his ankles, mm -hmm. being dragged. A and shoe. There's a shoe, a wallet. She's starting to find his belongings. Mm -hmm. She follows all this down to this, the one of the what? Mordock. The Morlock holes. What, what bent from um, the time machine? Yeah. Um, that bent. That's what they call. That's them. what Ben calls them. But you know, it's it's one of the sewer sewage pumps, the cylinders. Yeah. Um, the, the, the concrete lid on the cylinder is a, a jar. Right. And she hears like a little laughter from in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I don't know. Well, good. What, because what do you... now he can't kill anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so she ran. She got the losers. Yep. She told them all about it. They go back to the fridge. They get the fridge open. Some pom-poms fall yep. out. Mm -hmm. Stan groans cool. when that happens. Yeah. We're so, seeing little little bits of Stan not being capable of handling this. Like yeah. his weak, he's the weak link in their in their circle, if you will. Yeah. So written inside the fridge in Patrick's dying blood, it says, "Stop now before I kill you all." A word to the wise from your friend Pennywise. Yeah. So Bill loses it. He's walking towards the fridge, yelling, "You killed my brother! Mm -hmm. You!" Son of a blah, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever. It starts hailing, like to the point where the ground is covered. Yeah. Covered in hail, and so they all, they all run out and huddle him, and they like have a little cry. Yeah, and a hug. And a hug. hug. Yeah. And Bill says that it is scared of them. He can feel yes. it. Why else keep threatening them? Yeah. And not doing something to them. He's yeah. constantly saying, "I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you," but he never does anything to try and kill them, really. Yeah. He's never able to. Mm -hmm. So that's probably So that's where something. that chapter yeah. ends. So now we're on to chapter 18, The Bullseye. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> one thing that I got from this chapter is that Bill's the leader. Yes. Now that Beverly has the slingshot, it's like she's in charge of protecting him. She's in love with him. Well, yeah. So the person in love with him is is just happens to be 
the person who's the best shot and who's now put in charge of protecting him. Interesting. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. So, again, chapter starts out, 1985. Um, ben is in the library sharing his memories. Yep, now it's his turn. Now he has a second scar on his belly, aside from Henry's age. Yeah. He has another scar. Yeah. Ben's not getting out too well in this. <laughs> Um, and it, what, that scar wasn't there two nights ago. So the scars are only returning as they remember stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and the one thing Beverly remembers is that they were so close back in 58 that they could read each other's minds. Right. So that, that will then explain what happens towards the end of this chapter. Is that, so, <clears throat> so they decided to make silver slugs instead of bullets because they figured it would be safer for them. Right. And, you know, if the gun would misfire or mm -hmm. if they didn't make the bullet right this way, they got Beverly, who's a great shot at the bullseye, so they can make a, a silver slug and she can shoot it at it. Yeah. So they decide they're going to melt down one of Ben's silver dollars. They are, they are very ingenious crafty. little kids. Yeah, they're very crafty. Yeah. I can. So we go back to 1958. Yeah. Um. Ben made the ammo, and they were in Bill's house. Yep, Zach's. They set up a, a like a, a dummy Monopoly board. Yeah. So if the, any of the parents would come down and see them, you know, they would think they're playing Monopoly. Yep. So while that board is set up and whatnot, you know, as a distraction, they're down there making, you know, melting, melting it down. They got their mold. They had a whole plan. They got two ball-bearing molds to pour the silver, the melted dollar or silver dollar in mm -hmm. and everybody had a job to do and and yeah and, it, and ben takes over and he's like the leader then see he's the yeah. leader and you know that that was like the project he's like the project manager yeah he was the project manager for the for, for the dam the dam and the fort mm -hmm. like that's his that's his part and as much as like a uh nobody he feels like he really sort of captures those leadership moments and right and he when he's got sort of feels him. like thor it said yeah when you know no matter no matter what he's like in his life he feels like thor when he well even when he's talking to beverly it's usually he's kind of shy because yep. he loves her but it's different when he's ta taking over a task he he can talk to her normal and he orders people around and yeah he's the drill sergeant and i think another funny thing that happens in this chapter is that Ben is daydreaming about Beverly. Yeah. At the same time, Beverly is daydreaming about Bill. Yeah. So we have this little triangle going yeah. on here. Yeah, we do. So Sharon Denbro comes in. I think I think uh, Bill's parents were out for the evening. Yep, they went out for the evening. And then and then, and then uh, his dad was going to drive everybody home. Mm -hmm. Get everybody home safely. Beverly had to lie about where she was. Oh, of and she course. had to call her mom to, mm -hmm. you know, and said she was at the library. She said, right? No, I think there was like a community place where yeah, that's right. the community kids hung center. out, yeah. and they said, "Oh no, the parents are taking turns." So she got why Zach or why uh, Zach Dembro's dropping her off, and she's and all of that, so she can cover her tracks because her parents would have been really upset. Yeah, yeah. If she was right. in a house full of boys. Yeah. So Bill's mom comes in, you know, to say, "Come on, kids." Uh, we're going to take you home. And she feels like an electric charge. Mm -hmm. This is after they did the ball bearing. Yeah, this is after. Everything. They actually do go start playing Monopoly. Yeah, after they got their silver dollars all melted down and into little slugs, which Bill is keeping hold of. Beverly's too scared. Yep, she's too, she doesn't want her dad to find out. Yeah. Um, then they all go up and then they actually play some Monopoly. And Stan wins. And then they make fun of him. Because, well, he says... Jews are good with money or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then yeah. they're all making fun of him. And she's like, what? What are you guys doing? Don't be doing that. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. And that's when she feels kind of like they're, they're like older than they should be. They're closer than they should be. There's something else going here. And she gets a little uneasy about it. Mm -hmm. So July 25th, 1958, they go to 29 Neibolt Street to look for it. Yes. Um. Ben thinks this is one of its doors that, you know, this is a place where it can come in and mm -hmm. go out and, you know, yeah. go home. and. Well, makes sense. Yeah. Since, you know, there are multiple sightings here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Encounters. So as they're going in, they get the sense that it knows we're here. Yeah. 
It knows we're here and it's waiting for us. Um, Bill gave the two slugs to Beverly at this mm-hmm. point. She put one in her pocket and put one in the uh, in the cup in the yeah. bulls in the uh, slingshot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Bill, as they're walking in, or I'm sorry, Ben, as they're walking in, he feels like a a poisonous aura surrounding the yeah. house. Yeah. Um, so they go under the porch. Ben gets stuck. I know. Poor Ben. Ben gets stuck going through the window twice. Yeah, twice, First yeah. his butt, then his belly. <laughs> he had to, like, suck Poor it ben. in, and they had to pull and push him. And what I'm thinking at this point is, what if they have to run out? I know. Like, he's not getting They're out. They're going to have to go a different way. Yeah. They can't go through the windows. Yeah. Because he's, he's, he's going to get caught. Yeah, so, yeah, he's screwed, basically. So <laughs> I like Ben, too. I feel bad that he's, like, such a chubby kid. I think he might be my favorite of the losers. I like him. He's a sweet boy. Who do you think your favorite is? Oh, I don't know. I like Bill, too. Bill? Yeah, Bill and Ben are pro- I like Beverly, though, too, because she shows some gumption. Yeah, see, I thought you would have said Beverly. Yeah, but I like... Bill kind of pulls on my... Or not Bill. Ben pulls on my heart. Yeah. Because he's like this sweet little boy who's... Who's too chubby, but he's really smart and really sweet, and yeah. I just and now Beverly's in love with Bill, and I just feel mm-hmm. bad for him. I don't know. Yeah. So on their way to go up the stairs, they find a white clown glove. <laughs> so up the stairs, they emerge in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Beverly almost shoots a rat. You know, she's like <laughs> on edge at this point. Yeah, she's really ready, and they're like, "Don't shoot it! Don't shoot it!" And there's now this is an interesting part. There's a men's magazine, a little girly. Mm-hmm. nudie magazine and in 1985 Beverly would recognize Mrs. Kirsch yes as the lady who was on the cover of that magazine back in 1958 yep. mm-hmm. I thought that was that was a neat little yeah little thing so the the girl in the magazine winks at Ben <laughs> of course it's Ben the guy who likes to look up skirts and yeah <laughs> poor Ben so <clears throat> The house started changing dimensions yep, as they're walking getting through. Bigger. It started getting big, bigger and elongating. Yep. And it would, I guess, the feeling that they got was that it's trying to separate us. Yeah. Because they it, almost did. They almost lost Ben, right? Yeah, Ben. Yep. Yeah, Ben, who all of a sudden looked down the hallway, and his friends were like, mm-hmm. way, way down this hallway, like yeah. further than they should have been. And then something almost happened, so then they're like, let's, let's everybody, we're gonna stick close together. Yeah, and Ben, as Ben has to run to catch up to him, and he they, says it felt like I ran a half a mile. Yeah. And then I turned around, and it's just right. ten feet yeah. back. Yeah. And even they said, like, when they were separated from Ben, it sounded like he was yelling at them from a long distance. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So it's trying to. So the house or it is trying to separate the losers. But an interesting thing with that is that that's exactly what happened with the smoke hole. Yes. Yes. So it's that's almost true. like that. That's true. Power that's true. is coming from both the good side and the right. evil side. Yeah. So that the, this well, the, ability to manipulate, mm-hmm. you know, our worldly dimensions. Yeah. Basically. So <clears throat> where do I want to go from here? So, you know, so, so they keep going. In, in, in order to sort of reaffirm the dimensions of the house, Bill jumps up and touches the ceiling. And then it's everything Stan's seems to freaking out. Again, yeah. Stan's getting really panicky and this helped him like come come back down a little. But he jumped up and touched the ceiling, but if you were to look at him, he was just swiping air. Yeah. But he was actually hitting the cell. They're like, okay, this is like our mind playing tricks on us almost. Yeah, it's like in their mind. it's in their head. Yeah. Together. So, they see the same thing in their yeah. heads together. Like Bill said, it's not real. It's more like, like a Halloween mask that the house is wearing. Yeah. So they make their way up, and they're going through some rooms, and they end up in a bathroom upstairs. The toilet looks like it had exploded. exploded. Like fine por not just like a little bit. It's like porcelain dust. Like there's min- like small parts of the toilet. Yeah. So a, a large force had to have done that. Mm-hmm. Bill went uh, to the mouth of the drain where the toilet had been, and he heard the pumping machinery. And he said, uh, this is where the werewolf came from. It always comes that's, from drains. And that's why it's it busted that hard, because it must have been coming up fast to come get us. Yeah. It was coming out with a really big force, and that's why the toilet's like in small pieces now. Yeah. And Ben at this point can see with his mind that it's coming towards them yes. and it's coming towards them fast. Mm-hmm. So it's 
it's coming after them. So somehow it knows where they're at, mm -hmm. and wherever it's at. Yeah, and then suddenly the werewolf is standing right over the drain. Yeah, and once Richie goes, it's the werewolf, It's everybody sees it as a werewolf. Because yep. at first it's just like this shifting kind of shape. You can't really define it. And once he defines it, then everybody <coughs> could see the werewolf. They can see his fear. Yeah, they could see the his After fear. his fear has been... Has, has taken on a, a physical manifestation, then they yes. can all see it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and the werewolf is wearing a Derry High School killing team jacket with the number 13 embroidered on it. With his name, Pennywise. <laughs> he cares about the details. you got to give him that. <laughs> so, so here we go with this love triangle. Yes. So the werewolf is coming after uh, Beverly mm -hmm. with a claw. Ben pushes her out of the way and saves her. Mm -hmm. um, and all the while they keep yelling at her, shoot, shoot it, shoot him, shoot, shoot Beverly. Then it lunges at Bill, mm -hmm. then pushes out, out of the way of that one as well. Yeah. So say it it uh, it knew Ben was in charge. So, or no, I'm sorry. Bill. It knew Bill was in yep. charge. So it was oh. after Bill mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. Because if it got Bill, Everybody it, else it felt would like they would apart. crumble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Beverly, like I said, she loved Bill, so she's the one who's, you know, to protect him. Yes. Um, so she shot a ball and missed it. Mm -hmm. This time there was no magical force to curve it back. And there's only two balls now, so yep. she only has she one left. She only has one, yep. Um, so Ben's like in a struggle with this thing now, because he, he's now he in his grip. He touched it. Yeah, he, he actually went out and reached Put it. Put a finger in his eye. Yep, he was actually touching it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when Ben got the Slash. fall down, yep. the, like he, from his chest down to the yeah, top of his he belly. Yeah, fell into the tub. Fell into the tub, and he's hurt bad. Mm -hmm. He's bleeding bad. Yep. They're not sure if it's fatal or not. I mean, yeah. that's how bad it is at yeah. this point. Yeah, scary. Yeah, he's bleeding a lot. So it goes for Bill again. Beverly shoots it in the nose. She's aiming for the eye. Yep. But. It was off a little bit. Got its nose. It screamed, almost a human scream, mm -hmm. of surprise and, and fear and pain yep. and rage. Um, somehow it was still alive and she's out of ammo now. Yeah, but I like what she does. So, she well, they start yelling at her to kill it. Yeah. Kill it. Like it's this, like we said earlier, like they felt like they had, that they could speak to each other through their yeah. minds. Mm -hmm. This is where that comes into play. Right. Because they all know... She shot both of her slugs. Yep. Mm -hmm. But they keep telling her to shoot it again. Yep. Shoot it. Kill it. And she and she keeps her hand cupped over the bulls, like the ammo, whatever cup. Mm -hmm. She like there's another one in there, and, and they're taunting it. And it actually believes that she has another yes. slug. So it can only read their mind sometimes. To a to a degree. Yeah. Unless they're unified in something, I guess. Yeah. Because they were all, and once everybody realizes what they're doing, they're all shouting at her to shoot it, to kill it, and then it, it runs away. It turns, it runs, it crawls back down the drain. Yep, and then they get the hell out of there. <laughs> and as it did, um, there was a split second where Ben thought he saw it change into its its, its natural yeah. form, and it, it, his True heart self. froze yeah. for a second. Um, and as it's, as it's going down the drain, it says, I'll kill you all. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> We've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it can't seem to do it. No. Nope. For some reason. So <clears throat> there was a, after it sort of disappeared, there's a thud that they hear as the house settled back yeah, down into. Yeah, it gets back into its normal shape. Natural dimensions. Yeah. And um, then they see Ben's okay. He's not mortally wounded, yep. but he is wounded. He has got a big, bad. A big cut on Cut, him. twist down. Yep. Going it's down to his belly. Cut. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't understand this part. Beverly's blouse lost all of its buttons. Well, because when she, like, stretched it, for some reason it, it must have been a shirt that... Because she heard the pop when she went to shoot it the second time. She heard all of her buttons pop, but she didn't realize it what it, that was. So what there she was. is. Her shirt's, like, hanging open, and all the boys are She's like... Exposed. <laughs> She's exposed. She's exposed. What? And that's the moment that Bill notices her for the first yep, time. Yep, that she's a girl. And yeah. Ben sees, sees Bill notice yeah. her and, and he's is like, oh, game over. His heart was crushed. I got and, no chance now. <laughs> and he had a thought run through his mind like, take take good care of her. Or yeah. Something to that effect. I'll always love her, but you take good care of her. So yeah. Just let me love her. So you Bill, can have her. Bill so gives God. her 
Bill gives her his shirt. Oh, and Ben, the pain that Ben felt when Bill and Beverly locked eyes so it was worse than the pain of getting Aww, yeah, cut by the ben. werewolf. That was worse than the physical pain. I like pain. Bill too, though. Bill's a really good kid yeah. and guy. Like he's he's really he's a really sweet guy. He's a good kid. He takes off his shirt and gives it to Beverly after she's like, "All right, one of you give me your shirts already." <laughs> yep. So they go back to the clubhouse and mm -hmm. and they they realize that the slugs worked, not necessarily because the slugs would always work, but because they were united in their belief that the slugs were going to work. And this is where they start, where Ben and Bill both kind of have this thing about, well, especially Ben, you get, because Ben's telling the story, power. How do you get power? Beverly has power over me because I love her. Yes. And Bill has power over her because she loves him. So he started going down this, like, kind of um, path of, like, where does power come from? Yeah. How does one get power? Yep. So, and then he said something, and then he saw, he commented he could see Bill's thinking about it, too. So then that makes me wonder, too, what are they, does their, maybe they'll realize their power comes from them as a group? Or some, so it was a very interesting kind of mindset they were going down. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point, and even, I didn't even jot that down, and yeah, as a, yeah that's a good point. I thought that was an interesting yeah. point, because I was like, that's true. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, so. All right, so now we go on to Derry, the fourth this, interlude. This wasn't my favorite interlude. No? No. I, well, I've, I don't think you can beat the Black Spot. No, the Black Spot was good, but even the Bradley Gang was good. That was good. This one was a little... At first, I wasn't sure. I had to go back a little because I think I lost something. Okay. I don't know. It wasn't... But I, then I figured out what happened. <laughs> all right, so this... Mike, of course, Mike... These are all these interludes are from Mike's journals mm -hmm. that he's written. And like stuff um, from the past. This one was written before he made the phone calls. Mm -hmm. So you got to go back to that mindset. Um, so he writes about this place called the Silver Dollar Beer Joint, um, which was maybe the most bizarre mass murder in American history. Um, happened in September of 1905. So it would have been the end the cycle. He heard this story from Egbert Thorogood, who was 18 years old at the time and was a witness. And Mike believes his account over anyone else's. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking, is it possible that his account is more accurate than anyone else's because he was younger when he saw it? Oh, that's a good thought. I didn't think He was 18. That. So maybe yeah. he saw it through juvenile eyes. Maybe. So he has a more accurate... Maybe, yeah. Depiction of what happened. Maybe. Um, I don't know, because, well, the depiction of the Bradley gang, too, he was very detailed in that as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe the talking about it or something, maybe that helps them remember, just like the losers had lost all their details, maybe something like that's going on with the, because that's an immaculate details. Yeah. Because he was... For the Bradley game, he was telling where everybody was. Like, how do you remember? Where they were positioned. So, and what <laughs> kind of weapon they had. Like, so many years. Ago. Yeah. I don't think I could do that for any. Yeah. But, too, it was like a, a traumatic event of life, though. Like, a huge moment of life. Like, I think you could do that when you have big, big, big moments. Maybe they... It was like when Henry broke Eddie's arm. As Eddie was falling down to the ground, he noticed every single crack yeah, in the sidewalk. True. Yeah, and Like that... Those moments, those life and death sort of yeah. moments where time freezes. and Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. But, okay, so it's the, the summer of 1905 was extraordinarily hot. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of fires in Derry, and this guy, uh, Claude Hero, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but... Sounds good. He admitted to setting the worst of those fires, mm -hmm. which burned 20,000 acres. Yeah, for a logging place, too. That's not good. Derry was a big lumber town at the time, um, there was talk of unionizing. So there were four, there were sort of four guys who were in charge of uh, organizing. Yeah, they basically. were organizers. They were trying to get everybody into the union. Claude was one of them. Yes. So this is where I got confused, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, so there's four of these guys. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone talking about unionizing was fired on the spot. Right. So Derry is pushing back against... Mm -hmm. Unions. Yes. Um, 
so these four organizers, they spent the night at a hotel that the lumberman called the Floating Dog. Three of them were murdered and mutilated during the night. Claude escaped. Mm -hmm. um, the bodies, when the bodies were found, there was a paper pinned to their back that said Union. Yeah. And, I mean, they were mutilated pretty bad. Yeah, I was going to say it was pretty brutal. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Right. Um, and then he, and then it was after this that he started the fires, right? Yeah. Because he kind of took off, he escaped, and then after that he started burning the forest. He escaped, so he became a, like a ghost man mm -hmm. after this. Yeah. He disappeared from town. He would be seen from time to time, like getting in food lines and getting getting some chow and some grub, and then he would just disappear again. Right, yeah. Because there were people clearly after him. Mm -hmm. The police wanted to talk to him. Right, well, yeah. But nobody could ever catch him. And whoever killed the three other guys, why did he, how did he escape? Did, how did they he let escape? him? Are they still after him? Yeah. Yeah, and so it's pretty clear a lot of people want him dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has these vanishing routines. Um, and during that summer, there were a lot of fires. Children went missing, you know, the usual yep, the cycle. cycle. Yes. Um, but it's interesting that the cycle started with the murder of these four guys, and he escaped. Right. So was he supposed to die? Hmm. So we That's don't know that exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, we're not even sure who killed them. No, yeah. We don't know who killed them either. So um, on September 1st, it started raining. Downtown Derry flooded. September 9th, the silver dollars packed. Guess who walks in? Well, most of the men at the card table, I believe, were guys who were suspected of killing the four, the the three union oh, organizers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So a lot of these guys are in the silver dollar mm -hmm. on September 9th. Yeah, that's right. They're yeah. in there mingling around, and Claude walks in. He sits at the bar. He has a, a double bitted axe. He sits down at the bar. Nobody seems to notice him. At least none of these guys at the card table who are clearly after him. They don't seem to notice him. Even though people are yelling his name and people are going up and mingling with him and yelling, yeah. hey, Claude, you know. Yeah. So it's pretty obvious Claude's in there somewhere, but they don't seem to, hmm. they don't seem to hear him. Right. So at some point, you know, he's ordering drinks and whatnot, and he just gets up and starts chopping up people. It's like he has a hit list. Yeah. He's only going after specific people. Right. I mean, he just starts chopping up people. Now the roles are reversed. Now the people who he's not after don't seem to notice what's going on. Yeah. As where before the people who so would have wanted a, him. Yeah, so there's something else going on. Yeah. That makes you... So he's chopping people up. Meanwhile, there's people at the bar eating peanuts and eggs and ordering drinks, talking about the flood. They have no idea what's going on. Right. Meanwhile, a massacre is taking place, you know, two feet behind him. It, one guy, in fact, at a point, a head rolls at his feet and he just kicks it away nonchalantly. Like he doesn't That's even so realize. Creepy. Doesn't even yeah. realize it's a head. Well, see, then, then your theory might be true to why he, that guy can't remember it because maybe he was kind of still an, a young person. So Thorogood, this guy, yeah. Thorogood yeah. says, because he was there, he says, we knew it was happening. We knew what was happening, but it didn't really seem to matter to us yeah. at the time. See, that's the whole evil in the soil kind of thing. Yeah. Something's in the soil of dairy. Yeah, he, he they said... They turn their heads to horrific violence. Yeah, he said it was. it's like politics. It's like we're not politicians, so we really don't care to be involved in it. Yeah. Is yeah really, is, is yeah. kind of how he... Yeah. yeah. So there's this guy named Stugley. He had a gun. And I guess Claude was after him. He shot Claude. Well, he shot at him once or twice and missed. Fin he finally shot him in the thigh. And then he escaped through the outhouse. <laughs> and he ran down the street covered in stuff. And um, Gross stuff. <laughs> later on... <laughs> that Beverly had drank. <laughs> later on, he was laughed out of town. Yeah. Like, he became a laughing stock after that. I mean, what would you do? I mean, I don't I know. If that was my method of escaping, I'd do it yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. What are you supposed what to die? What if he came after you? Yeah. So when Claude was done, he just went over to the card table, sat down, and put his head in his arms and 
they came in and arrested him and took him to jail. It's weird they didn't kill himself. But um, his presence at this time is like vacant. Like he's not even in himself. Right. He's yeah. just a shell, really. So they put him in jail, and it was only at that point that the town started reacting, started yeah. getting mad about what he was doing. Yeah. So they all sort of bunch together, and they go down to the jail and yank him out. The, the, the uh, guys who are watching him get scared when they see this mob coming. So, and the sheriff, I don't think the sheriff was in town at the time. I don't remember. Um, but there's like a deputy there, and he he got scared, and I believe, I believe, I could be wrong on who was there, but whoever was watching him, Just they got scared like, and bolted. Yeah. Oh, um, I wouldn't want to go up against an angry mob. <laughs> yeah, so they yanked him out of his cell. They carried him to an elm tree that overlooked the canal, and they lynched him. And... I said he was didn't even seem like they were lynching him. They were just lynching this this body that yeah, just as ghost of a person. So Thorogood, of course, Mike asked him if he saw a clown or anything that day. Thorogood says earlier that night um, I was at another bar and there was this comical sort of character. Mm -hmm. He was in there doing flips and jumps and magic and all kinds of tricks and things and. He actually thought there was maybe like a circus or a... Or a yeah, they always think that. There's like a carnival yeah, in the next town kind of over. It's some yeah, kind of a carnival you know. or something going yeah, on. Yeah, why not? That's why there's a clown. So this ends. Remember, this is before he made the phone calls. Yeah. This is before anything happened. Um, you know, present day, before anything happened. Mike is expressing doubts about how much power the losers are going to have as adults. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, says the you know the power of monsters is in faith yes. and nobody has more faith than children um and then in in 27 years after you grow up a little you lose that belief in magic you know that's replaced by you know more adult situations of paying well, bills and well, let me throw this in there okay maybe that's why they had to forget about it because over time, wouldn't you have warped that into something that would make sense as an adult? Yeah, that's good. But if you good. came back to it, all Fresh. of a sudden you just had all this, and it felt, it's all coming back to you, and it just feels like yesterday, you'd have less chance of making it less believable. Because as adults, you're going to try and put reason into it, because nothing like that can possibly exist. You know what I mean? And as you get yeah. older, as you, you get look older, back... You see it through adult eyes, your childhood. Uh -huh. You know, like, tw you know, they always say 2020 vision. So maybe that's why they couldn't remember until they needed to. Say hindsight is 2020. Oh, yeah. 2020, 2020 vision. <laughs> Whatever. Shut up. No, I know. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know. I know. But maybe that's why, because when you look back at your childhood, you can see it as through adult eyes. And now they don't have the chance to, for that period of time to see it through adult eyes. They're also, kind of reverting back to their child. So they're childhood personas, the child personas yeah and then remembering it slowly so like they can't make it you know realistic it's going to be truthful you know what i mean yeah does that make sense yeah maybe that's why they had to forget about because i've been trying to figure out why they had to for why they forgot it not just like like oh yeah that's right but like completely had no memory of it at all right right maybe that's why okay maybe that's the good side but it doesn't realize this because it it thinks 27 years have gone by they're adults now mm -hmm. they no longer believe in santa claus or you know the yeah. monster in the mm -hmm. closet yeah so they're not going to have the power to take them down they're not going to have the power to unite in their and faith missing one and their missing. magic yeah. yeah they're missing one yeah so I if they're going to replace that one so it feels completely safe calling them back as adults yep. to get its revenge. But now it's, I think it might be well, we'll second see. guessing. Or? Maybe, but it hasn't really made a huge, it's just made it like a little warning. Say, get out. It hasn't made like a huge move to hurt any of them. Yeah. Because they're all still, they just did their walkabouts to get a little, you know, I guess, see what happens, reintroduce themselves to the town and everything. But now they're just all remembering everything. Yeah. So I don't know. It feels like maybe it should make its move before they remember it all. Yeah. Because now they're going to remember how they almost got rid of it. Yeah. So yeah, I, that's true. that seems dangerous. And, and uh, it's not making smart moves. No. No. It's too comfortable. 
Yeah, it but Matt might be why too because it's like, well, they were kids, of course. They believed just like uh, Victor told Henry, or Victor told Henry in, when he was leaving. If they totally believe, I can't hurt them. But if they partially believe, I can. So well, maybe they're counting on adult as maybe it's counting on that they're adults that they're not going to fully believe in it. Here's something I just thought of. If if it called them back. Then what was the deal with when they were doing their walking tours? It warned some of them that they better leave before night. Are we sure well, that it called it back? Called them back? Well, we're, no, I'm, we're, I'm saying if it called them back. Oh, I mean, the, the turtle could have called them back. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm leaning more towards the turtle called them back. You think the turtle called them I back? I don't think it wants them there. Okay. Because even though they're adults, <coughs> they still have something over him. Or it. Yeah. Not necessarily him, but yeah. an it. Um. And, but the turtle wants them to get rid of it. Yeah. That's my thoughts. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so that's that's it for this one. This, yep. We are done with part four. Yep. We have one more part, part five. And we're going to have this done before the movie comes yes. out. Yes. So yep, we have. It was getting tight. It was, but we but, but we cowboyed up. Yeah. <laughs> and we actually made it through a video without any interruptions. It's, it's amazing. No dogs barking. It's, it's good. All right. <laughs> and that's it for this one.